Do you think my videos would do better if there were cats in them? Should I have more cats? I mean, I think tabbies are really popular. They're tabbies? Tabbies are trending on Twitter. How quickly can you get a tabby? <laughs> Some pig. Hello, it's story time, boys and girls. Today's story is about a pig named Oinky, but he doesn't live on a farm. He lives in a bank. So picture a regular pig, but fatter and less cuddly. Maybe a tie on. He's some pig. You see, up until 2008, Oinky went around sucking up all the money he could by getting people to sign up for mortgages that he knew they couldn't afford. Some pig. But luckily, it didn't matter whether the people could afford it or not. He would get a bonus, other rich people would bet on whether the homeowners would pay or not. It was fun for them. Sure, it meant that millions of families would lose their homes and their entire life savings. And let's be honest, that wreaks havoc on a family, so perhaps there would be... <laughs> Anyway, we're getting off track. Point is, Oinky got fatter! Hooray! But then, the unthinkable happened. Too many people couldn't pay, and the whole thing came crumbling down. But lucky for Oinky, socialism came to the rescue! The whole country pulled our money to pay for the gambling losses of the big banks, and we saved the day. The banks were saved, the economy was saved, and the only ones who got hurt were the millions of sad sacks who lost their homes and their savings and their credit ratings and perhaps their spouses and maybe their children. Hooray! He is some pig. So now it's been a few years, and Oinky has thought to himself, man, you know what I liked? I liked when all those confused people were giving me money. And since no one punished me last time I did this, clearly, I could just get right back to it. He tricks really desperate people into taking out a loan. The banks do this because they're counting on the fact that people won't be able to pay in time. The high interest rates aren't enough. So on the day the loan is due, the full amount plus the fee is subtracted from the person's account. If there's not enough money in the account, which is a lot of time because that's why they took out a loan. They don't have a lot of money. The person is then charged an overdraft fee and then other fees, which quickly snowball into a spiral of debt deeper than Nicki Minaj's understanding of particle physics. Okay, a lot deeper than that. This is just one example of how our current form of unfettered, punch your neighbor in the balls capitalism is founded on lies, bullshit, euphemisms, and cronyism. And bullshit does not make for a good foundation for an economic system. You ever stood on a pile of shit? It's very slippery. The people at the top of the big banks are blood-sucking, bank-robbing, loan-rigging genital blisters. They're flesh-eating bacteria who make life-sucking diarrhea look like a good thing. Hmm. They make billions every year, but morally, they're bankrupt. And the only way this system could ever work is if they're trusted as much as a bull in a china shop or a, a priest in an orphanage or human torch at a gas station. The only question now is when exactly we'll get tired of it enough to tell them to go fuck themselves. You see, in our world, where the big banks own our politicians and therefore essentially regulate themselves, they live by a simple model. It's all fun and games until someone loses an eye. But then it's still fun, because due to their lack of depth perception, I win all the games. This is a segment I call Badass Mofos, where I get to bring you the stories of people who are standing up against the worst kind of profit over people. As you might have heard, there's been just a few foreclosures going on around the country, some of them legitimate, many of them not legitimate, either because of fraud or lying or, or maybe, for example, the class action lawsuit going on right now in which Bank of America employees are saying they were told to flat out lie to homeowners in order to force foreclosures. Then there are other examples involving something called MERS, which I'm not going to get into right now because one, it's about as interesting as describing the inner workings of diarrhea, and two, it's about as disgusting as describing the inner workings of diarrhea. Hmm. Anyway, some people, 
are standing up against the bankers who love kicking people out of their homes. They love it more than Paula Dean loves saying I is what I is, and I'm not changing. Occupy Our Homes has been helping to keep people in their houses in a variety of ways. A recent example is the case of Parkwood Farms, a therapeutic riding center for children with disabilities in Snellville, Georgia. They had quite a fight on their hands because the only thing the big banks love more than kicking people out of their homes is kicking children with disabilities. That's it. Just kicking them. So HSBC was salivating at the idea of foreclosing on the farm, despite the fact the owner was a victim of predatory lending and flat out lies from the bank. Many badass motherfuckers had press conferences about Parkwood Farms, organized candlelight vigils, created online petitions, even protested inside HSBC's law firm's office, and it fucking worked. I want to thank everyone for their support and to help through this fight. HSBC was shamed into leaving Parkwood Farms alone. Congratulations to all the badass mofos who fought for what's right and allowed the therapeutic riding center to remain open. I own my home and my property and now the therapy center is safe. I'm sure HSBC is currently on the hunt for other autistic children to kick off of their horses. <laughs> This is uh, Hate Mail, where my friend and lead singer of my barbershop quartet, Henry, is going to read some of my hate mail that we, we got on uh, the Big Banks rant I did. The truly sad thing is that so many people agree with you. That greedy CEO employs more people than some pansy love child skipping around lighting incense and managing an organic market. Great idea, fucktard. Attack the only people creating jobs. Ah, young Anakin, I see you've been indoctrinated quite well by the ruling elite. Here's the answer you seek, and I know it's going to blow your mind, but I'll, I'll go slowly. There are jobs in this world doing things that are good for the planet. I know they tell you that the only place there are jobs are creating oil pipelines or cutting down forests. But we could create a society that had jobs planting forests or building solar panels. We could have good jobs out there. It is possible. But the big CEOs are the ones that are most publicized. That's true. Those are the ones you hear about. Those are the ones making billions. But uh, is that really something to seek to be? Do you want to be the guy that, that, that makes billions at the expense of everybody else? Definitely not. What I would do is treat my employees a little more humanely than some of them are now. Mm -hmm. Give them at least a living wage. Exactly. Happy workers are good workers, right? Right. I know you spent a long time as a pansy love child skipping around lighting incense. What, was the, what were those days like? <laughs> that is the biggest farce in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I have photos. <laughs> All right, thank you, Henry. That's your hate mail. Here with uh, Rick Wolf. Would you prefer Professor Richard Wolf? Sounds good. Thanks for meeting us out here to, to talk about our, uh, the situation that this country's in right now. As Eric Holder told us, uh, that a lot of these big banks are too big to prosecute. Uh, it would hurt the economy to even, to even attempt to prosecute them. Uh, does it hurt the economy at all to tell them they're too big to prosecute? doesn't look like it because if you go back to 2008 when the economy came this close to collapse, every one of the banks that was too big to fail then is bigger now than it was then. As if to mock the whole game, they're just making themselves in a stronger position for the next crash than they were in the last one, and we will pay the price. They always have socialism to bail them out. They have socialism for the rich. It's a very special kind of socialism. We turn to the government to bail us out, and as soon as we're bailed out, we want to make sure the government doesn't spend too much money on anybody else. It's a charming arrangement. Capitalism, like jokes and like cats, once you dissect it, it doesn't work anymore, right? So don't look at it. You can't discuss the economic system. 
You know, we have debates, what is marriage, what is sexuality? We have not had a debate about capitalism. Is it working? Has it got problems? Does it have strengths and weaknesses? No, 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 no. You can scour records of what our elected officials talk about. A debate about our economic system? Mm -hmm. Never. Should it be that a tiny group of people in every corporation, the board of directors, 15 folks, selected by the major shareholders, another 15 folks, make all the decision that thousands of employees have to live with? Here's a thought. How about we democratize our economy? How about we say the enterprises should be run democratically by the people who work there, one person, one vote, and the people they serve, the customer, one customer, one vote. You think workers at a factory would vote to move it to China? It's unlikely. I think they're going to vote to give a tiny number of people wild packages of millions of dollars while the rest of them can't pay off their car loan? Uh -uh. So we would have a completely different economic system if we democratized it. So my only question is, why the hell haven't we already done that? And even if we haven't, why are we not discussing it? Socialist! That's it, run. Quick, <laughs> before they get you. <laughs> But aren't you being a bit of a negative Nancy? Because I looked at the stock market recently and the Dow hit like a record high like a month ago. I think it's going great, right? If a significant amount of your wealth is in the form of stocks, you should be very happy. If you don't have a significant amount of stocks, and that would include maybe, oh, 85% of the people, then the, the good news in the stock market is not good news for you. You say the number one question you get is what do we do now? Yes. So what do we do now? I think we face the, the music because we really don't have much choice left. Thanks a lot. Appreciate okay. it. Okay, my pleasure.